Hi everyone, I'm Martin Bamford. We need to talk about stagflation. High price inflation, slowing economic growth. It's a tricky economic situation for policymakers because the measures they can take to bring down prices tend to hurt economic growth. The stagflation is where we appear to be heading right now in the UK, thanks to a combination of the Omicron variant and a persistent high level of price inflation. Yep, I don't think we can call inflation transitory anymore. In this video, new comments from Bank of England policymaker Catherine Mann, suggesting that stagflation could be coming very soon. Mann spoke about the ways in which the Omicron variant could push up prices while also hurting our economic recovery from the pandemic. This scenario isn't great, I have to say. During a Q&A event hosted by Barclays, Mann said it's a particular question mark here as to whether or not that Omicron is going to reduce consumer confidence and leave us again in a situation of somewhat of a slacker demand for spending than we might have thought going forward. Omicron could also result in consumers slowing their shift in spending towards services, which had been expected to help slow rising price inflation, she said. The new COVID variant could further stretch supply chains in China, assuming they opt for a zero COVID strategy, imposing tough lockdown restrictions in parts of the country. Global supply chain disruption is already a significant factor driving price inflation, so if that gets worse, inflation could get a lot worse too. Man said that the Bank of England was confident that medium-term inflation expectations expectations remained anchored. This, of course, follows the latest Bank of England interest rate decision, where the Monetary Policy Committee voted to keep rates on hold at 0.1%. Mann was, however, in the minority of committee members calling on the bank to end or at least slow down its programme of quantitative easing. Looking ahead to the December Bank of England meeting, coming up on the 16th of December, market expectations for a rate hike have been scaled back slightly in recent days, actually more than slightly, quite a lot, and that's largely due to the Omicron variant. Financial markets thought a rate hike in December was a near certainty. Now, they're giving it a 50-50 chance of happening, at least for a rise from 0.1% to 0.25%. Man said during this Q&A session today that it was premature to talk about the timing of a Bank of England rate hike, saying it's premature to even talk about timing, much less how much. This risk of stagflation is not unique to the UK economy. We're seeing signs of it all over the place right now. So in the Eurozone, inflation rose to 4.9% this month, up from 4.1% a month earlier. That's higher than economists' expectations, and it's the highest level since records began in 1997, a couple of years before the launch of the euro. Factors driving European inflation higher include rising gas prices and the higher cost of imported goods. Energy prices in the eurozone rose 27% from November 2020. That's according to Eurostat. Across the 19-member bloc, inflation ranged from 3.4% in France to a whopping 9.3% in Lithuania. These latest figures are bound to place the European Central Bank under some pressure to accept that price inflation is not transitory, but it's starting to become rather embedded. And then in the US, high price inflation and rising levels of COVID infections have dented consumer confidence. The conference board reported today that its consumer confidence index fell two points to 109.5 this month. That's below analyst expectations. They're still forecasting a good holiday season for retailers, and they expect economic recovery to continue in to early 2022, but they conceded that confidence and spending will likely face headwinds from a combination of rising prices and a potential resurgence of COVID-19 in the coming months. In Japan, a country that's faced challenges from chronic deflation, they are now experiencing inflation, but it's the wrong sort. It's imported inflation in Japan, that's due to wholesale energy prices, with Japanese wholesale inflation reaching a 40-year high in October, up 38% year-on-year in yen terms. Consumer prices are up by just 0.1%, still a long way off the Bank of Japan's 2% target, but it surely won't be too much longer before the wholesale inflation levels feed through. From an investment perspective, there's no easy answer to stagflation. We don't know whether central banks will prioritise tackling inflation by hiking interest rates or supporting economic growth by keeping monetary policy loose. There's a decent chance that they'll stick to the party line that inflation is transitory and instead focus on supporting the economic recovery post-COVID. Rising prices make your money worth less in real terms and that can pose a problem for dividend stocks. So if dividends fail to keep pace with rising prices, income investors are left worse off as a result and that can prompt investors to sell their previously attractive dividend payers. Stocks more generally face some challenges from stagflation too. If the economy slows or enters a period of recession, 
company revenues fall, and that hurts profitability. Growth stock valuations, based on projections of future earnings, they see their value eroded by a period of rising prices and lower economic growth. And there's uncertainty when it comes to bond valuations because we don't know whether central banks will maintain or hike interest rates. That all depends on whether price inflation or economic decline is the dominating factor. Central bank responses will naturally follow the biggest threat. We're often reminded that equities tend to outperform inflation, but that doesn't hold true, at least in a historical sense, during periods of sustained higher inflation, around 3% a year or more. Equities tend to perform worse overall during these periods of higher price inflation. There's about a 50-50 chance of equities outperforming when inflation exceeds 3%. Some market sectors seem to prefer bouts of higher price inflation. The energy sector, for example. But tread with caution there, as UK energy providers right now, in particular, they're struggling to cope with that killer combination of the energy price cap and rising wholesale gas prices. In other words, it's costing these energy suppliers money to supply their customers at the previously agreed price cap levels. Also keep in mind, that a period of stagflation, lower economic activity, could lead to less demand for energy. And that, of course, is bad news for energy stocks. Take care when it comes to gold, too. Traditionally, it's seen as a hedge against price inflation, but there's plenty of evidence to suggest that gold is actually an unreliable boyfriend. In 2017, a research paper published by Lucy and Sharma exploring the relationship between gold prices and inflation in the UK, US and Japan during a 40-year period found that global financial turmoils do not always come hand in hand with gold inflation hedging capacity. The researchers couldn't conclude empirically that gold prices and inflation had a long-run relationship. So there are no easy answers when it comes to how best invest during a period of stagflation. The missing bits of the puzzle here are we don't know if this is stagflation yet, and if it is, if it turns out to be, for how long it might last. And we also, of course, don't know what the central bank response will be to a combination of rising prices and slowing economic activity. If there is indeed a combination of rising prices and slowing economic activity if there is indeed stagflation. We don't yet know if that materialises. For those reasons, I'm going to remain well diversified across main investment asset classes and also continue to take the long-term view of my portfolio because, after all, what else can you do? How do you rate the UK's chances of a period of stagflation? Let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. Thank you for watching this video. Until next time, I'm Martin Bamford. And remember, when it comes to your money, the more you know, the faster it can grow.